When they first showed me this next segment, I had a lot of notes, which is good since it's about music. Check it out. Music is beautiful. It can make us dance, it can inspire us, it can even remind us what it feels like to fall in love. Not bad for a series of vibrating air molecules and a little math. Hi, I'm Hannah Evans. This is Sound Science. Today, we're exploring the mathematical fundamentals that make music work with the help of a little DIY instrument. One of my favorite parts of working here at the Musical Instrument Museum is showing people how music is math. It's all about wavelengths and ratios. For many musical instruments, the length and measurement of the strings or tubes is what determines the notes that the instruments can play. I want to make this a simple concept, so let's look at a simple instrument. It's called a monochord. In ancient Greek, mono means one and chord means string. Let's play a note on the monochord. Now let's cut that string in half so that the ratio of the new string length to the original length is one to two. It sounds higher, right? That's because the half string is vibrating at exactly twice the frequency as the full length string. This produces a note or pitch that is one octave higher than the original note. Frequency is one of the key properties of a sound wave. It tells us how many times in one second a sound wave pattern is repeating. But what exactly is an octave? The distance between the bottom note and the top note of a scale is an octave. So every time you sing, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You're running a full octave between do and do. To show you what I mean, let's create a pan pipe out of some items you probably have at home. To make our pan pipe, we need at least eight straws. I'm using agave straws to be eco-friendly. Start with measuring the lengths for each straw and marking the desired length. There we go. Now, cut the straws to their desired lengths, striving to be as exact as possible. Remember, this is math. Precision counts. Then, arrange your main straws from longest to shortest, but keep the tops aligned at the same height. Before you assemble the pan pipe, you'll want to use something to help space out the straws so the instrument can make clean notes. I'm using leftover pieces of straw. Now, tape the straws together, just above where the line of spacer straws are located towards the top of the instrument. And that's it. Our instrument is ready to rock. Here is our low note. And here is the highest note. You can hear it's one octave higher than our low note. Now listen to what happens when I close a tube. Did you hear that? The sound went down an octave. The frequency was cut in half, but why? It's because the sound waves moving through the air can't get out of the closed end anymore. They have to come out the top. That means that they have to travel twice as far all the way down and back up. Twice the distance means half the frequency means one octave lower. And that's it. Have fun playing with your pan pipe. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you again with some frequency. Bye. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really. I've seen this one over a hundred times.